Hello and welcome to another instance of Optics Red Debates. Uh, lately we are going through some basics uh, and basic features, basic terms, basic technologies uh, found in, um, in optics. So in this instance, today and I, Theodore, will talk about locking feature on uh, technical turrets and all other turrets. So today you look through all the emails we received regarding this matter uh, and just shoot with questions. Well the, the first question is of course very obvious what actually is the locking function of a turret? Yeah we get sometimes this uh, what does it mean? Well it means that both elevation and windage turret when you're <coughs> dialing in the elevation and windage can be locked in some position. So let's say <clears throat> you dial in um, enough clicks to let's say to shoot on 300 meters, then you lock, and now when it's locked, you're not able to move it again. So it's the locking function prevents accidental movements of the turret. This is the locking function. So that when you dial in the elevation or windage correction, that you're able <coughs> to lock the position so it doesn't change anymore. Uh, it can be locked at any, some turrets have a locking function only on zero, so only on zero setting, but majority of, uh, of turrets which have a locking function, you're able to lock it in any, at any setting. Not only well, you mentioned that both windage and elevation turret have a uh, locking function. Is it, mm -hmm. Does it occur with some rifle scopes that they have only elevation or only windage <coughs> turret with locking function or not? Mm, I have to be honest, I don't <coughs> really know about any rifle scope that would only have locking on one turret only and not the other. Mm -hmm. It is however possible. Mm -hmm. I would say that definitely some producer maybe do something like this, but uh, not to my <coughs> knowledge. In majority of scopes with, with a locking function, you found uh, the locking function, uh, you find the locking function either uh, on elevation and on windage at the same time. Okay. So if someone comes to us and says, uh, why do I need the locking function, what do we say? Well, <coughs> I would basically say there are two main reasons. One is, well, the main reason is not to move the turret accidentally. But uh, usually it's needed by either uh, those shooters which shoot a lot in tactical environments, police, military, sport shooters on tactical competitions and so on, where you dial in a setting and then you're going around, you're moving with your rifle, you're maybe putting the rifle inside of a bag or something like that and you don't wish to, to move it, the, the turret. And the second uh, group of users are hunters because you know when you're hunting in the mountains or stalking and so on, you're rubbing your scope against your body, your clothes and so on and movement, unintentional of movement course. can occur. <coughs> so. Locking function is usually a very nice feature on uh, on hunting BDC turrets. So on those which have only uh, written distances, distances on the turret yes. on on modern hunting scopes, there a locking function is very very nice to have. Mm -hmm. I mm. see this tactical rifle scope you have here has a locking function. We have quite several rifle scopes here, including one target scope. Mm. Uh, does all of these have locking turrets? No. I would say the locking turrets can be found uh, either on premium high quality tactical scopes with exposed turrets or on hunting scopes, also premium high quality hunting scopes with uh, BDC turrets, so with, uh, with the ballistic turrets, on those two types. Uh, on target scopes, on majority of target scopes you don't find, if they have, like this is also a target scope aside from, if they have a exposed turret, a tactical turret, they usually don't have a locking function. So you can freely move the turret at all at all times. The reason for this is that with such a scope, you will not go into tactical situations. You will not move the rifle a lot. You come to a shooting range, you see the target on on a distance, let's say 500 meters. You dial in and then you shoot. It makes move. sense. Yeah. On on some other let's say tactical but uh, entry-level tactical scopes uh, there is no locking function because it would be too expensive it's as simple like that I would say majority of scope uh, scopes tactical scopes around 1000 euros have no locking function mm -hmm. uh, because it simply costs too much and then on target scopes 
like also on Kales on and Cytron, they are basically the same. Maybe not there is no locking because it's not needed. And then there are some, I would say hybrids almost, like this uh, Kales, mm -hmm. the new uh, K318i and the new K525. Uh, they have a, they say twist guard, Kales twist guard. They have a system that the turret on this side can rotate freely and you don't change the clicks. I would say this is halfway between a full mechanical lock and two uh, turrets without a lock mm -hmm. function. So it helps you to prevent unintentional movements, but on the other side, if you still, if you grab it around it or, or touch it in any other way, you can still move the turrets. So it solves the problem only partially. Partly, yeah, but there is some other problem with, uh, with uh, locking turrets. Let's say like on this Schmidt & Bender. Let's say you dial in 30 clicks mm -hmm. and then you lock. It's also nicely written lock. And then you come into a hectic situation and you forgot that you locked the turret and you want to change the clicks. And well, with this Schmidt & Bender very, really hard, but with, probably with some other scopes, it would be possible to break the, the lock. So this is something what the twist, uh, twist guard is preventing because at one part it does preventing unintentional movement mm -hmm. but in hectical situations you grab the turret and you're always able to apply clicks so <coughs> you're not able to break the lock. Um, so in, and it's also easier not to push up and down usually all the locks on tactical scopes are that you push a part of the turret down or up like with this, with this um, uh, razor, you have to pull the entire turret up to move it and then push it down to lock it. It's the same with, uh, with uh, Schmidt and Bender. Uh, on BDC turrets, hunting turrets, there are different systems, many different systems. You're rotating the locks and yeah, so no, on. Yeah, like a Magnus has the yeah. locking mechanism you mentioned. Yeah, so it, there is different, but with tactical is usually up and down. Mm. So uh, in general, rifle scopes, uh, hunting rifle scopes uh, of premium class with mm -hmm. a BDC turret have a uh, locking function yeah. um, and the premium tactical, tactical rifle scopes. scopes. So yeah, premium is associated with locking turrets because usually this costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, so premium products. Usually if they have exposed turret, they have a locking function, while a little bit more affordable products usually don't. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. I hope we covered most of the issues regarding the locking function on tactical turrets. Uh, if you forgot anything, please use comments below this video or send us an email. And normally, if you like the video, please subscribe. Take care.